Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Power System classes. So in the last class, uh, we were looking about the important aspects of uh, transmission line, and we have studied about uh, uh, like the different kinds of transmission, like short transmission line, median transmission line, and long transmission line, and we have derived the equations for uh, these also. Now we can. Uh, uh, we can uh, go about uh, like you know further into the transmission line. So in the last class, uh, uh, we were looking at the transmission. So in the while modeling the transmission line, I have said that we need to find R, L, and C. Okay, that is inductance, uh, resistance, and capacitance of the transmission line. and capacitance of the transmission because this is very important because uh, like uh, for long transmission line or short transmission line uh, like if you remember in the last class i have said that a uh, short transmission line can be represented as resistance plus inductor okay for how much length is there we have to find the length according to resistance for that much of length and inductance for that much of length okay and we have to make a model like that so this is very important so we have to find how actually to find this resistance and inductance and for media transmission line we have to find uh, something known as a capacitance okay. so so capacitance is very important because if you look at the capacitance there is something known as a Faraday's effect okay. Faraday effect the Faraday effect basically says that uh, in light load or a no load condition In light load or no load condition, uh, receiving and voltage is greater than the sending and voltage. Okay. So this particular phenomenon is known as uh, Faraday's effect. Okay. So if you think like this, uh, there is something like you know receiving and voltage is there. So this receiving and voltage is actually greater than sending and voltage. So like if you uh, think like this. If this is uh, something like 2 to volt sending and voltage, so this receiving and voltage will be greater than that. So 240 or something. So how is this possible? Because this is a sending and voltage, and the voltage has to be dropped here in normal condition. So this is uh, due to this particular effect is due to uh, something known as this is happening only on uh, like in a long transmission line and in median transmission line also, where there is an effect of capacitor is there. So long and median transmission line. The, and the load should be light load condition or basically no load condition because here there should not be any load okay so if there is no no load at this particular condition here at the load side the current is basically in leading condition right look at this part the current is basically in the leading condition current is basically in leading power factor So current is basically leading power factor condition. So if you just take this voltage as Vs, sorry, uh, you receiving, and this current is basically in leading power factor condition. So this is basically I receive. Okay. So why this is in a leading power factor condition it is because here the transmission line is in light load condition. That is, the effect of this capacitance will be dominating here. Okay. So that's why this is in light load condition. There is absolutely no load connected of course inductor there is no inductor or capacitor actually connected at this particular point okay so uh, that is uh, if you think like this it is almost connected to a capacitor at the end okay so that is why the current is actually in leading condition then this will be something like ir r and 90 degree to this uh, this will be i into C. okay so actually if i, I draw it correctly is not that big so this will be i r into r and this will be i z into because r will be very small i r into uh, so this current into resistance uh, inductance this will be current in this so this will be v s if you think like this now v s is actually uh, less than v r okay v s is now less than v r 
that means now sending and voltage is actually less than receiving voltage. That means in order to get 240 voltage here, we have to give only less voltage here. Okay, less than 240. That is basically uh, like you know something like an amplification of voltage is happening here. Okay, that is due to the presence of this uh, particular capacitor. So the capacitor is actually boosting the voltage at this particular region. So that's why this a shunt capacitance can be used as for an voltage booster okay, or for a power factor connection. So everything we can be, uh, connect, if we connect a shunt capacitor, we can use that for voltage uh, stabilization or voltage regulation. Okay. So the capacitor will also provide uh, some, uh, like, you know, it will also act as a supply for the reactive power so that this voltage will get regulated here. Okay. These things are we will study in voltage regulation part. Okay. So that means now uh, if you take the regulation of this transmission line, personal regulation will be mod of uh, V sending, sorry, V receiving minus, sorry, V sending minus V receiving divided by mod of, uh, v okay, something like, or if you define all time this way, so that means now uh, this is neg negative regulation, right? Because the receiving and voltage is actually greater than the sending and voltage. So that is basically an, Okay, so opposite way, yeah, we, we can say. So uh, something like V receiving minus V sending by V receiving. That is basically a positive regulation, okay. That means uh, the voltage at the sending receiving end is now greater than the uh, voltage at the sending end. So this particular thing is known as uh, Ferranti effect. Okay. So all these things are important in a transmission. So if you look at all these things for modeling of a transmission line and uh, or finding the response or something. So all these things we require equivalent circuit. And now we have to determine the each parameter of the equivalent circuit. Parameter of equivalent circuit. That is R, L, and C. These are things we have to find. So we will be actually studying it one by one. So you can just write all these things. Uh, I'll wait for a minute so that you can write all these things. Okay. Now we can go to the uh, first part that is the system. So I think everyone knows how the find out resistance of a transmission line or a, or a coaxial, something like this. So R equal to rho L by A, right? This is simple seventh standard thing in there. And uh, okay, like in school, we have studied all these things. So, so then resistance per unit length R by L is basically rho by A, okay? So uh, we can find a distributed resistance R by L equal to uh, this rho by A. So this is the, uh, an important part, how to find the resistance, okay. So what are the things which depends on the resistance is uh, length of the conductor, area of the conductor, and this resistivity. So resistivity of a metal is constant for a particular temperature. For a particular temperature. So for at a, at a particular temperature only, this resistivity will be a constant. So as temperature changes, as temperature changes, then rho also changes. Okay, so that means rho equal to some rho zero into, uh, we can say one plus alpha into delta T. Okay, this will be the equation. So rho, C, rho equal to, uh, this will be temperature coefficient of resistivity. Temperature coefficient of resistance. Okay, <clears throat> this will be temperature coefficient of resistance. And uh, if you think it another way, so if you think that there is something known as a frequency dependent okay, of resistance. Okay, because in normal DC condition. Uh, normal DC condition, 
then the DC current will be actually flowing through the bulk. Okay. So like everywhere the current density will be same. Okay. But what is happening in AC? So in AC, what is happening is that the current, uh, like you know, does not go uh, like you know into the bulk. Okay. There is some distance known as skin depth. Okay. So it will only travel up to the skin depth. That means even though the AC for the area of the cross section of the conductor is A, the current does not travel entirely through A. Okay. So that means uh, uh, there will be lesser area of there. So we have to define R AC at that particular frequency. Okay. That will be different. So what is basically skin effect is that, uh, like, you know, for a particular frequency, the current may not be uniformly distributed in the surface of the conductor uniformly distributed in the surface of the conductor. That means current may not be uniformly distributed in the surface of the conductor. So if I explain like this, so these are important parts. They will ask you in the interview. So I will just draw it. Here. So something like this, only this much of part Will be the current will be flowing near to the surface of okay, this particular region. So the area of the cross section will be actually lesser. If you think of this way. Okay. That depth, depth is basically known as skin depth. How and depends on the frequency. So the skin depth delta is directly proportional to root. So if you check the equation, so as frequency increases, uh, like you know, the skin depth also decreases. So for DC, the frequency is basically zero. That means skin depth is infinity. That means it will be actually flowing through. The bulk of the conductor. Okay, that's why we actually look at. So frequency. So the resistance depends on the frequency of the AC also. Okay. So next is basically the proximity effect. Proximity effect is the distribution of current in one conductor due to the uh, current in the other conductor. There is some when well, there is very close to one conductor is there, and there is some like a current flow is there. Okay. So then the current flow is there, then there will be a magnetic field associated with current. There. If that links with this one. Then uh, the current flow of this will be actually detected by the lens. Okay, so the effect of this will be also coming to play here. Okay, so uh, so the current distribution will be different, so the resistance will be. Different. Okay, so this is another thing uh, what normally people consider when you consider resistance. Okay, so R A C will be uh, some constant, or we can write some constant or something. Else. Uh, so RIC will be different from RDC, okay, and uh, something known as a temperature is also there. So at that particular temperature, the resistance we have to find out. Okay. So now we can conclude what are the important factors which affect the resistance. Okay. So what are the, so if you want to find uh, the resistance of a conductor, uh, then we can find R equal to P by I, right? This is basically coming from the Ohm's law. That is basically integral E dot dl minus integral E dot dl by uh, surface integral J dot dx. So if you use this, we can find the value of resistance. This is basically a uh, lambda thing. Lambda thing. Is basically the distributor. So you should be careful with these things. Okay. So you can just write down this one. So we can write out what are the important factors affecting the resistance. Important factors affecting resistance. The first one is uh, basically uh, the length of the conductor. Then area of the conductor. Then 
temperature so this temperature will affect the resistivity row then for is uh, skin and proximity attack that is frequency These are the four important things which affect the so this is skin and proximity effect will affect the area of okay, area of the cross section where the current actually flows. Okay, so you can write this one, and then we can move to the next one that is inductance. Okay, now we can look at the inductance. Okay. Resistance we have completed, then we will go to inductance. So, what is the basic definition of inductance? What is basically inductance means? So, uh, inductance basically is a uh, like, you know. This is the property of a basically a property so which uh, actually says the ratio of flux linkage by current so that is for any body uh, we will give some current then what is the ratio of the, how much flux it produces to the current okay so the flux linkage how much flux it is linking divided by the current okay. this is basically the uh, like you know uh, <coughs> uh, basically gives the flow inductance okay. so we can write inductance l equal to psi by I. so psi is the total flux linkage and i is the current okay or we can another way we can say it is the like you know the property of a material or a property of a thing uh, which produces the how many how much flux it produced uh, as the ratio of the current okay so how much flux linkage it has as the ratio of the current that is basically known as the inductance okay so if you write any current carrying conductor produces magnetic field right so any current carrying conductor like this so actually current is actually flowing through like this so this produces concentric magnetic field around it okay like this So any current carrying conductor will produce a magnetic flux. So yesterday I have explained to you that since these two flux does not meet each other or there is no interaction between these two fluxes, so we don't want to consider the mutual inductance effect. Only we have to consider the flux self inductance effect. That is very important. So this flux, uh, what is the total flux linkage of this one divided by the current? That is basically known as the self inductance. So self inductance basically means uh, the self flux uh, with respect to the uh, current flowing through the same conductor okay that is basically known as self inductance so if there is a, something like a flux there and uh, there we, we put a conductor here then uh, if this flux also links this conductor then this is known as the effect of how much flux it links here that is basically psi to one how much flux it is linking with this particular conductor divided by current in the first one so i1 that is basically mutual inductance m21 okay so that's how we actually define self inductance and mutual inductance self inductance is the ratio of self flux by the current self flux divided by current that is self inductance so that is l i i self flux produced due to the current flowing through that particular thing divided by the current how much current it has to be. So mutual inductance M I J is the 
म्यूचुअल फ्लक्स ऑन जे ड्यू टू आई डिवाइडेड बाय करंट इन आई सो असीम दैट देर आर टू कंडक्टर्स वन कंडक्टर इज आई एंड अनदर कंडक्टर इज जे ओके सो आई वी हैव प्रोड्यूस सम करंट सो दिस फ्लक्स विल बी एक्चुअली लिंकिंग विद जे आल्सो सो हाउ मच लाइक यू नो like how much flux is linking on j uh, due to the current actually flowing through i that is basically known as mutual inductance so one of the easiest thing if you look uh, there are actually seem that there are two conductors okay one here and one here so we are actually giving current here so it will produce something like a flux right so if you move this this way what happen then the mutual inductance actually decreases something like this so because the number of flux lines also reduces if you go to this way okay, because more flux lines will be actually concentric so mij uh, is a function of like you know distance so the m21 as a function of distance will be almost like uh, a, like if you look at this this almost fits an exponential peak not exactly an exponential but the approximate most uh, like you know reliable or most practical approximation is an exponential peak almost falls as an exponential peak okay so this is the and uh, this depends on the number of turns in this conductor so like and uh, some other things also like how how is the coupling or the current like it does not depend on the current but uh, like number of turns and other things how much flux it has produced like that is a different issue you don't have to study this okay so that is uh, i already explained there will be two kinds so then if you look this conductor closely The current is actually flowing inside, right? So there are some flux inside also, and there are some flux outside, right? So we define two inductance now. So one is the internal inductance, right? Internal inductance. So internal inductance is the if you think about the internal inductance, uh, it is the total flux linkage inside the conductor due to the current flowing inside the conductor. Okay, that is the internal inductance. So I will define the internal inductance as ratio of L internal will be ratio of flux inside the conductor divided by current flowing through the conductor. So at that particular, so if you draw this in a large scale, if you are actually looking at this particular area, very small area. Then what we will do is we will actually find the total flux linkage at this particular area divided by the current flow. Sorry, the current which flows through this particular thing. Okay, so that is basically the um, internal flux. So external will be somewhere here. Okay, at this some particular point we we find the flux linkage. Okay, so that is basically the external flux, external inductance. So the total inductance will be L total will be L internal plus L external. This will be the total inductance. So we have to find the uh, two uh, inductance, internal inductance and external inductance. So while we actually find the inductance, we have to remember one thing: the frequency effect, that is the skin and proximity effect, is neglected. That is the current actually flows through this uniformly. Okay, similar to a DC. Current actually flows through this uniform. Skin and proximity effect is neglected. This is very important. Skin and proximity effect is neglected. So we should remember this uh, while we actually find the inductance of a transmission line, uh, the skin and proximity effects are neglected. Okay, now we can actually think about the internal inductance. so if i draw it correctly assume that is one so this is the cross section now we are finding the internal inductance
this is direction x this distance is uh, like you know x and this is dx okay assume this way now <coughs> the current density will be j will be j will be equal to i by pi r square right so this is basically and write in, this, is, this is in direction of x only so don't get confused with r that's why i write in x direction so uh, jx will be i by pi r square okay so up to this uh, x distance so the total current will be jx will be total current will be uh, like we can write total current i into pi x square divided by pi r square right so this pi will get cancelled so the total current up to the point x so this is j so this is jx will be i into x square divided by r square right so this is important okay now uh, we will use an ambient circuit law uh, for finding the h at this particular point so, so we use uh, surface integral h dot dl equal to i enclosed. Okay, that means hx will be equal to two dl will be I, two pi x. Okay, that is a particular length. So i enclosed divided by two pi x. Okay, if we substitute the i enclosed as this one, so it will be i divided x, x and x square will get cancelled. So i uh, into 2 pi r square into x, right? So how this ambient circuit is taken? Because just take a cylinder of unit length. Okay, this assume that this length is unity, then here everywhere the h will be constant. So h dot dl will be h into uh, 2 pi x into l will be i enclosed will be this into i x square r square into l. So this l and l is cancelled. So we will get this one. So i x divided by uh, 2 pi r square. So we get the hx. So from the hx we have to find the bx. So this is basically intensity of magnetization. Basically, intensity of magnetism. Then, magnetic flux density B can be found out by multiplying with the uh, permeability. Okay, so Bx will be equal to uh, mu into Hx. Right, so Hx we know what is the Hx. So B mu by 2 pi into I into X by R square. Right, so we got the value of now Bx. Now we have to find the inductance. So inductance is basically flux linkage by current. From B, we have to find the uh, flux linkage. Okay, what is the total flux linking this particular thing? So that can be evaluated by considering uh, the flux link. So we can find the differential flux d phi. So d phi will be bx into dx. Okay. So that is basically mu divided by 2 pi into i by r square into x dx plus bx we already know so we will actually multiply this with dx and the total flux linkage d lambda will be equal to pi into x square by pi r square into dx right because assume that uh, the total flux is actually passing through this one so the total flux linkage is at this particular thing will be at a point of x will be pi x square by pi r square okay, into d phi. So we can write like this. So d lambda, if I substitute d phi here, so we will get uh, mu 0 by 2 pi i x cube by r raised to 4 dx. Okay, so we will get the value of uh, d lambda. Now we can find the total internal inductance lambda will be. We have to go from this 
uh, x we have to go from 0 to r then we will get the total internal matrix that will be integral 0 to r d lambda so integral 0 to r d lambda so if you differentiate this particular thing uh, we will get sorry integrate this particular thing we will get uh, mu 0 i divided by 8 by so that means lambda internal will be equal to mu zero i divided by eight pi. Okay, that means uh, inductance internal will be equal to lambda internal divided by i. That is mu zero divided by eight. Pi. Right. So uh, this is Henry's per meter. Okay. So because we are taking while finding the Ampere times we are taking a uh, unit length of the length. Okay, that's why we are taking right meters ampere per sorry head is per meter. Okay, so this is very important. Okay, so we got the value of internal inductance. So the total internal inductance will be mu zero divided by eight pi. Now we can think about the external inductance. So I am uh, not going very detailed like derivation of this similarly actually we can derive for the external also i will just write the last answer for this one so external inductance is basically uh, if you think like this the inductance of a thing which is outside the radius so what is the inductance at this particular point okay so the, what is the flux density of this particular point uh, divided by uh, like you know the current through this one so we will get the inductance of that particular external inductance okay so <clears throat> we can write lambda external is equal to mu zero divided by two pi i ln d by r so d is this particular distance so d by r r is this particular radius so lambda external divided by i will be equal to mu zero divided by two pi ln d by r okay so that means the total inductance will be the sum of these two right so that i have explained it earlier so that will be Uh, if you write the total inductance will be mu zero uh, divided by so the internal inductance was mu zero by eight pi plus in uh, internal was mu zero by external is mu zero by two pi ln b by r right so if you add these two what we will get is if you take uh, mu zero by two pi outside this will be one by four plus ln d by r right so that will be l total will be equal to mu zero by two pi into ln d by uh, if you write r dash okay this r dash is basically e raised to minus one by four r okay so e raised to minus one by four r that is because uh, this can be written as log of ln of e raised to 1 by 4. So e raised to a into e raised to b is basically e raised to a into b. So we will get this particular thing. Okay. So uh, r dash will be point actually 0.7788. Okay. 0.7788 into r. Okay. So we will get uh, this particular value of r dash. So the total inductance of a transmission line, a single transmission line will be if I write it uh, like this, so that will be L will be equal to mu zero by two pi ln d by 0.7788 into r. Right. So, so assume that uh, like you know there is a hollow cylinder, hollow conduit. Okay. There is no internal inductance for this one. Okay. And there will be external inductance. So what is external inductance? That will be mu zero by assume that this radius is something like you know Rh. Okay. That is basically mu zero by two pi 
ln d by rh right so if you compare these two we are getting something right so rh will be 0.7788 r okay so that means if this conductor that is a, this is a totally metallic conductor right so if this conductor is replaced by a fictitious hollow conductor uh, replaced by a fictitious hollow conductor is replaced by a fictitious hollow conductor then the radius of that fictitious hollow conductor is basically 0.7788 r which produces same flux that is these two conductors produces same flux right so now we can ask so this thing that is uh, e raised to minus 1.4 r or equal to 0 0.7788 r uh, is something uh, we normally called as gm geometry okay like this is there are both more than one is there then we say it's a gm okay for the time being we can try say this is uh, if you replace this particular conductor this particular conductor by a fictitious hollow conductor then this uh, will produce the flux the total flux produced by this and this will be equal when the radius of this will be this particular okay so uh, that's how we are actually defining the this particular radius equivalent radius of this so this particular r dash is known as the equivalent radius of known as the equivalent radius of the uh, conductor so what is basically equivalent radius means so equivalent radius of a conductor uh, produces the same so if this conductor is uh, replaced by a hollow conductor of equivalent radius then both produces same flux okay when a metallic conductor of radius r is replaced by a hollow conductor of radius r dash then both will actually produce the same flux okay that is basically known as a fictitious uh, like uh, this conductor um, equivalent radius of that particular conductor okay now we can think about because nowhere in the world we are actually using a single transmission right so in older days when we are using telegraph so we use a single transmission line with uh, ground as a return conductor so after that normally we use actually double double circuit transmission line so if you just like this, this is the so you like this is the circuit. This is the source. And this is the load. Okay. This will be the one transmission line. This is the forward conductor. And this will be the other one that's the reverse conductor okay something like a like you know coaxial cable if you think so the there will be something inside that's the current carrying in the positive direction and there's a sheet or the ground will be the what is the return conductor okay. so there will be two circuit double circuit transmission line okay so this one so what is basically la la will be mu zero by two pi ln assume that there is some point d okay some d by so what is the inductance of this uh, due to this conductor here so d by r dash right so r dash is the equivalent radius of this particular conductor r a dash we can know okay, for the time being then what is l b uh, okay so we can make the distance d here so what is l b l b is d0 by 2 pi ln uh, d by rb dash right so that means the total inductance will be l uh, the total inductance will be l equal to la plus lb total of this total system will be la plus lb that is mu0 by 2 pi ln a plus b is basically you have to multiply this so d square divided by r1 dash sorry r a dash into r p dash right so if you take the two outside that is mu 0 by pi ln d divided by root of r a dash into r p dash right so uh, 
this r a dash into r b dash. So this is basically something known as a geometry. Right. So geometric mean you know, of two numbers is the uh, like you know the square root of their products. Okay. So this is basically known as the distance between these two. So this can be also written as mu zero by two pi l n root of sorry mu zero by pi l n root of d square divided by root of r a dash into r b. This is basically the geometric mean distance. This is basically the geometric mean radius. So, like you know, in a general case, we can write the inductance between uh, any two conductors is basically sorry, inductance of a system having two conductors we can write as L equal to uh, mu zero by pi ln GMD by GMR. Right. So this much uh, Henry's per meter. So if you uh, put the value of mu zero as 4.10 to raise to minus 7 into ln GMD by GMR Henry's per meter divided by pi. This can be simplified as uh, something like 0.4 ln GMD divided by GMR micro Henry's per kilometer. Okay, so 10 raised to 3 is given here, 10 raised to 3 is given here. And so 10 raised to minus 6 is there, then 1 10 raised to minus 1 is there. So that is multiplied with 4, that is 0.4. So, uh, like you know, as in the general condition, we can write like this. So now we can check this. There are actually uh, three phase conductors. Okay. So like this. So each distance is assumed to be d. So what is the inductance of this? So inductance of this will be L equal to 0.4 ln. So this will be. So we can take all the radius as r. Or the equivalent radius as r dash. Okay. So that will be uh, point if ln gmd you have to find the geometrical mean distance so cube root of d into d into d that is basically d. Okay. ln d by r dash okay so now assume that this is d1 d2 d3 so that will be square root of cube root of d1 d2 d3 right so assume this has some radius is different okay so something like R A R B R C. So that is basically cube root of R A dash, R B dash, R C dash. Right. This is how you have to find out. So the, the important things you have to remember is the how to find G M D and how to find G M R. Now, if you look think like this, each conductor of this one might have more than one conductor. So I assume like this. So this is actually uh, constituting a single conductor. Then for finding R dash, we have to find the GMR of this particular thing. That is, so if this R, if this particular conductor consists of three particular things like R A, uh, like you know R1, R2, R3, then we have to find the something like you know cube root of R1 into R2 into R3. Then actually we can find the geometrical mean radius of this particular thing. Then we have to use that particular value of R as uh, r dash then you have to find the other okay so that's for how we have to actually find so and i can think about another example one two three here also one two three so this will be this distance this distance this distance then this distance this distance this distance this distance a total nine distance will be there so nine through we have to take for finding GMT and GMR, uh, like you know, sixth root we have to use. Like this, we have to find each and every GMD and GMR for finding this particular inductance. Okay, so I hope you understood how to find the inductance of a transmission. We can write all these things. Uh, now we can actually go to the uh, capacitance, how to find the capacitance. You can write this, okay.
Okay, so we can think like this way for finding capacitance. Assume that this particular thing uh, is having a charge uh, of total Q of charge having a charge per unit length, small Q. Okay, like this. So, <clears throat> So we can actually find, we can take a Gaussian surface of like this. Uh, then actually we can find surface integral d dot ds equal to q n minus, right? So assume that this distance is basically x and this is basically l. That means d into uh, s is basically 2 pi x into l. The charge enclosed is basically q into l. So d equal to q by 2 pi x, right? So d equal to we know epsilon 0 e. That means e equal to d by epsilon 0, right? So that means d equal to, uh, sorry, e equal to uh, 1 by 2 pi epsilon q by x, right? So we can actually find the this one. So the first step is to find D using Gauss theorem. Second step is to find E. Third step is to find V. And fourth step is to find C equal to U by E. Right. So that's how we are actually finding this. Now we can find V. Okay. So V12, any two points between 1 and 2 will be X1. Let the points be X1 and X2. Any two points, right? Somewhere here x1 is there and somewhere here x2 is there. So this distance is x1 to x2. Uh, e into dx, right. Integral e dot dx. So we can take the minus also. So that, that we will get u by 2 pi epsilon 0 ln x2 by x1, right. So 1 by x is basically uh, log x. So ln x2 by x1. Now the capacitance will be C12 will be equal to uh, Q by V, right? So that Q will get cancelled. So that will be uh, C will be 2 pi epsilon uh, divided by ln x2 by x1, right? So this is how we are actually finding the capacitance. So assume that this one distance is basically the R and the distance is somewhere here h okay so we have to find the potential difference between this point and this point so that will be the capacitance between the that two will be 2 pi epsilon 0 ln h r okay so this is how we are actually finding the capacitance This is very simple only. Okay, we can actually find this. Okay. So this is actually we are considering this Q is for unit length, right? So this is basically capacitance per unit length. Basically capacitance per unit length. So the unit will be farads per meter. Because this Q is actually charge per unit length. Right. This Q is basically charge per unit length. So it will be capacitance per unit length. Now we can actually think about uh, a single parallel transmission. So here we there and here we have another. Okay. So the capacitance, we have to find the capacitance between these two. So we have to find the potential difference between these two divided by the charge. Okay. So, so assume that this is having a plus Q then the charge is actually coming back from here. This one is having a minus Q. That is V A B due to A, right? So this is A and this B. So potential difference between A and B due to this charge will be equal to Q by uh, 2 pi epsilon 0 ln D. This distance is basically D divided by R. Right. Similarly, V A B due to b will be q by 2 pi epsilon 0 so distance between uh, 
first you have to write distance between a and b so distance between d and b and b is basically r so ln r b by d right so how this d is coming is the distance between a and b then distance between a and a here distance between b and b then write distance between b and a okay that's what we are getting here you should remember this one now uh, the potential of will be the like you know we are actually considering a superposition so we will be adding these two okay so the total potential vab will be q by 2 pi epsilon ln right so here this is minus q right so we are putting minus because this charge is minus so ln d by r i minus ln r b by d right so ln a minus ln b is ln a by d so that is v a b is equal to q by 2 pi epsilon 0 ln d square divided by r i into r b right so if you take the square outside that is v a b will be equal to q by pi epsilon ln d by root of r i into r right so this is basically gm uh, gmr okay so you can write uh, c a b capacitance between a and b will be per unit length will be q by uh, this q divided by b right that is uh, we can write pi epsilon 0 uh, by ln d by gmr right so if there are more conductors is there then we can write cab will be pi epsilon 0 divided by ln gmd divided by gm right this will be basically uh, like you know unit length <coughs> So uh, we have actually, if you think about transmission line, so we know that L value of L will be uh, L per unit length will be I have derived earlier. So like sorry, uh, if this is okay, GMD by GMR. So you can just write down this one. That is basically inductance will be mu zero by mu uh, 0 divided by pi into ln into ln gmd by gr right gmd by gm and c will be equal to pi epsilon by ln gmd by gm right so if you multiply this ln c this gmd gmr will get cancelled this pi and pi will get cancelled so that will be uh, something like you know uh, mu zero into epsilon c That is uh, L into C. So this is uh, basically the velocity, one by velocity. Okay. okay. So if you take V equal to uh, one by root L C, that is uh, one by root V epsilon. This is the velocity. If you expand this mu zero epsilon, so it will be three into ten to the meter per second okay so that's why we can find that in a transmission line in air it the electromagnetic wave propagates in speed of light so this is how uh, actually maxwell's proved that uh, this electricity is also a, um, like you know electro this electromagnetic wave also propagates in the sound so uh, sorry in the speed of light so light is also an electromagnetic wave okay so this is how yeah, derived 
so <laughs> by this uh, actually i'm going to end this class i think you understood how to find the inductance and capacitance of a transmission line so in the next class actually we are actually uh, like you know going to end the transmission system now we'll be looking at the uh, other things like now it'll be a little bit small so next half of hour i will be actually looking at the this sag and insulator and other things very small things related to transmission then we will be going to look at the power flow okay in the next class thank you we can see in the next